Welcome to Small Business Hacks. The year of 2020. Damaged by the coronavirus crisis and the subsequent lockdown, my business, a touristic hostel, was on the verge of no cash flow. I needed to either renegotiate a better deal with the landowner, or we would burn our financial reserves in only a few months. I had one week before the negotiation, so I looked for some material to help me. That is when I discovered the lessons from Chris Voss. A former FBI senior negotiator, Chris Voss saved the life of few hostages. In a certain way, he also helped to save my business from failure in 2020. Here I expose his teachings and how they were useful to me, how they can be useful to you too. First, listen. Listen intensely. To follow this advice was especially difficult for me, because I was a bad listener. People want to be understood and accepted. This is a universal premise, and can even sound cliché. But there is a point of truth on it. Listening is the cheapest but the most effective tool that you can use for a successful negotiation. According to Chris Voss, by listening intensely, a negotiator demonstrates empathy and shows a sincere desire to understand what the other side is experiencing. Research in the field of psychotherapy shows that when people feel listened to, they also listen to themselves deeper. This helps to clarify thoughts and understand feelings. People become less defensive and more willing to listen to opposing points of view. It also makes the entire situation calmer and puts logic on the table. People that see a negotiation as a battle of arguments have voices in their heads. Sometimes they are overwhelming. Everyone just listening to the voice in their head. When you drive out anxiety and nerves and bring calmness and logic, you are doing well. Do not buy those internet techniques telling you that you should make your counterpart feel nervous or uncomfortable especially when they have something that you want. Second, isopraxism. If you ever watched the series The Office, you saw Andy Bernard imitating the words of his superiors and calling this mirroring. I guarantee it's not as ridiculous as it looks there, and it works. It even worked for an obnoxious character like Andy. Mirroring is also called isopraxism, and in a sense, is imitation. Humans and other animals might copy each other to bring comfort. This copy may be of body language, speech, vocabulary, or tone of voice. Often it occurs unconsciously and leads to trust. Trust is an essential ingredient of a successful negotiation. We fear what is different, and we are drawn to what is similar. Wolves of a pack hunt together. As deep as all that may look, when we see how the FBI uses this technique, it's almost laughable. For their negotiators, a mirror is when you repeat the three last words of what the other part just said. From the entire FBI negotiation manual, mirroring is the closest one to a Jedi mind trick. Simple and yet uncannily effective. Did I use this trick in my own negotiations? Yes, surely. I did until I realized that my counterpart, the landlord, is also using this technique with me. This resulted in some comic situations, like the same expression being repeated three times. By the way, please allow me a small digression. If you are enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for our next videos and activate the notifications. Now back to our subject. 3. Do not be a pitbull when dealing with another pitbull. What happens when you put two male beta fishes in an aquarium? The same when you put two alpha roosters in a cage, or two aggressive pit bulls in a closed space. If you play pit bull against another pit bull, you end with lots of bruises, and most likely not achieving what you could. But Chris Voss has another way to approach aggressive counterparts. It is divided into four to five steps. Step one, use the late night FM DJ voice. If you are in doubt of what that means, just imagine a tone between Morgan Freeman and Matthew McConaughey. Step 2. Start with I'm sorry. Step 3. Mirror, as said previously. Step 4. Silence. At least 4 seconds to let the mirror work its magic on your counterpart. 
Step 5. Repeat everything. During this process, slow it down. Attempting to achieve final goals too early is one of the most common mistakes for negotiators. People know when you are in a hurry, and they will feel that they are not being heard. This can undermine the game of trust, destroy the rapport, and put all your previous efforts down to the sink. Quiet the voices in your head, listen, and put your entire focus on the other person, on what he or she is saying. To apply that at business meetings, I always reserve on my schedule a time buffer. I use it if the negotiation takes an unexpected turn. This extra time helps me to not rush the meeting, to listen properly to what the other side has to say, and calmly design a common place where we can both compromise and have mutual benefits. How am I supposed to do that? Of everything that I learned from Chris Voss, this was the most unexpected. It's how calibrated questions have immense power. But what are calibrated questions in the first place? They are open-ended questions starting with who, what, when, where, why, and how. They inspire the other side to think, and then develop their positions in speaking it out. Of all those questions, the best are the ones starting with what and how. The why, on the other hand, must be used with care, because it can backfire, presenting an unhealthy accusatory tone. Remember the last time you went to a clinical doctor? What questions did he make to you? Chances are that most of them were open-ended, so he could have a better outlook of the patient for his diagnostic. Open-ended questions also invite the other part to talk and slow down the tempo of the negotiation. They help you to cool down, bite your tongue, and avoid knee-jerk reactions. So, pause. Ask questions. Let the other speak. Gather more information and, if possible, bring the counterpart to your side to create solutions for you. This brings us to the greatest question to be used by a negotiator. How am I supposed to do that? Asking that, with respect, will turn your position into a request for help. It will invite the counterpart to participate in your struggle and solve it, be it with concessions and a better offer, or with a non-monetary incentive. If the other side does not offer anything, he's testily admitting that your demands are fair. Either way, you are building a stronger position. Last, but not least, remember that people will take more risks to avoid a loss than to earn something. Make sure the other side knows that there is something that they lose if hands are not shaken. Make him remember that a deal is in both of your best interests. What my landlord would lose if we did not make a rent reduction deal? The tenant. And in this crisis, how long would it take him to find another tenant? Probably too much. Fortunately, he understood that. I wish you the same success in your future negotiations. And thanks for watching.